Time to cancel the cabal. With Stephen Roberts. On peoplesinternetradio.com. And welcome everyone to another Wednesday evening here on peoplesinternetradio.com. I'm Stephen Roberts and this is Cancel the Cabal. I have uh, one of my favorite guests on tonight. Um, she's from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Or is it Kansas City, Kansas? I'm not sure now. It's one of those two cities. But they're uh, actually twin cities. I want to welcome back Jessica Alstrom to the show. Welcome, Jessica. Hey, Stephen. Thanks for having me on again. Oh, you're very welcome. Is it Kansas City or is it Missouri? Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas yes. City, Kansas. Okay. Yeah. Two different states, but yes. Pretty much the same city, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a... I'm not from here, so I'm from California, so it's. Uh, I'm still getting used to how it all works here, too. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. You from a uh, sunny Southern California or somewhere? Yep, sunny LA. Yep. Yeah. Yes, LA girl. So I've been here for about uh, six years now in Kansas City. Oh, that's pretty nice. Mhm. It's a good place to raise kids. Yeah. Mhm. Probably a lot better place than uh, than uh, Los Angeles is, isn't it? Um, I would agree. I mean, there's there's aspects of California I miss, like the ocean and the mountains. But um, you know, there's, there's a lot of good family values here, and a uh, really great opportunity for business growth here, and just um, good people. And so I can have no complaints. Well, we're gonna have a fun show tonight. We're gonna talk about a little something different. Um, normally, yeah, let's you, spice it up. <laughs> yeah, normally you, uh, well, you're a life coach, and you uh, help people in certain areas, don't you? Yeah, I'm a kind of a unique life coach. Uh, my background is metaphysical, so I don't life coach through the, um, you know, the traditional academic realm of, you know, psychology and cognitive therapy, although I do a lot of that therapy. Um, it is all intuitive. Um, I don't have my PhD or anything like that, but uh, I had a kind of um, awakening or a transformation within myself when I turned 30. Uh, after kind of going through a real dark period and uh, I decided to go on a personal journey um, and, you know, find out what this whole world is about. Um, during that process, I learned to meditate and through meditation, I would go into deep trance and connect with, um, you know, higher, higher um, energies and all the different realms that are, we're going to talk about tonight. So in my life coaching business, um, I would say, number one, I'm a teacher. I believe in teaching people knowledge and wisdom so that they can uh, move out of fear and govern their own lives with empowerment. So that's really what I'm doing here on the planet. Um, after my own battle with my own suffering, I, I have a lot of compassion for people who are in the process of trying to figure out how this whole world works and make sense of it. So most of my life coaching is uh, through the metaphysical prof, uh, you know, perspective of empowerment through universal laws and connecting with that bigger portion of their selves or that higher connection that um, that we really need to have in life to feel supported. So uh, I would consider myself an intuitive life coach. Well, that's, uh, uh, well, that's amazing to me. Uh, you know, I, I've... Uh, I believe a lot of people have uh, intuitive powers in that, but uh, it's just a matter of being able to tap into them or uh, or use them. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I want to talk about tonight is that we all have this ability. There isn't anyone on the planet that doesn't have the ability to, you know, be clairvoyant, clairaudio, clairsentient, and I'll explain to you guys what that is, but just basically uh, the ability to see outside their five, you know, body senses, and we all have a lot more senses that we have access to uh, available, and uh, really the only thing that stops us from connecting with that ability is judgment and fear. So when we have a lot of fear in our life or we're stuck in survival or, you know, we have a lot of judgment towards life, we shut down our other sensories. So I was able to, through meditation, uh, kind of open those senses up so there's nothing special about me. I wasn't a psychic kid. I didn't, you know, I don't have any, you know, anything else that anyone else, you know, doesn't have already. Uh, I just was able to kind of work enough on my own healing that uh, removed enough fear from my 
energy field to kind of connect with the bigger pers- perspective of myself. So um, through those abilities, I am a medical intuitive, so I can kind of see what's going on in the body, and I can see a lot more than just uh, what a third-dimensional perspective would be, which is kind of like form. So, you know, chairs, tables, nature. I can see past that. So that's it's a great tool in my coaching and my teaching because I can teach people how to access that. Yeah, you mean ghosts and aliens, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. So right. I guess we should start off with your questions in that, and we can go, to, you know, we can let that just intuitively, organically happen. So what questions do you have? Well, there's a lot of people that, um, a lot of people out there, uh, I'm not sure how reliable they are, but um, one man, I'm not even going to mention a name, uh, maybe you know of him, maybe you don't, but uh, he says that um, aliens are, are just uh, interdimensional beings. Absolutely. You know, I mean, if we look at, if we look at just just different species and we don't govern which planet they're coming from, everything at the basis of it that's living has a consciousness. So, you know, a blade of grass has a consciousness, a rock has a consciousness, we have a consciousness. And then just like a dog would be a different species than a cat, uh, you know, an alien or an ET extraterrestrial something that's a consciousness that's living outside of the planet may have a different form of body, but the universe is just filled with consciousness. So if we think we're the only planet that has life, then we need to work on that ignorance because there is a lot more going on in the universe than we have any idea. And when you look at it through the perspective that I see, it's just, it's, it's just a different species. And the different species has a different home. And the different home has different rules that govern it. And that just happens to be maybe on a different planet. But we're more connected with... Uh, with those energies of late, as of 2012, we are a lot more connected with our extraterrestrial friends than we were, you know, say 50, 60 years ago, although we've been in contact since this planet originated. Um, I wouldn't consider myself an expert, but I definitely can tap into that energy. So what what else you got? What are the questions you have about it? Well, uh, I also wondered... um Actually, uh, our own spirits, our own uh, essence, aren't they, uh, aren't, well, I think we're capable of uh, traveling between these, uh, these, these dimensions, aren't, aren't we? Absolutely. Let me explain the dimensions for a little, uh, just, just kind of uh, roughly so that people can get an idea of what we're talking about. So, you know, there's, there's lower dimen- d- dimensions and there's higher dimensions. And from what I'm aware of, there's 12 main dimensions and we happen to be on this planet earth the third dimensional planet now fourth dimension has a whole new set of rules fifth dimension has set a different set of rules and really as you move up into the 12 dimensions what you're releasing is you're releasing density so you're releasing form so if manifestation or form or solidness is of the third dimension, and as we move up the higher realms, we lose the essence of physicality. So we're losing that, you know, having a body. So we just are just that conscious energy. So the fourth and fifth dimensions are gateways, and different beings, you know, travel between those different inter- d- different dimensions. And when you open up your intuition, which we all have the capability of doing, you begin to connect and feel with these higher dimensions because you're not so dense and limited. You're actually lightening up. The true definition of enlightenment, just lighten up. So as we lighten up, we have access to higher dimensions. Does that make sense? Absolutely does, yeah. So our consciousness has the ability to go anywhere it wants to go, and it actually does a lot in its sleep state. We travel interdimensionally. Uh, A lot of intuitives and psychics and channel readers, and, um, you know, uh, we we just happen to uh, tap into those higher level dimensions to access information that you can't really get on Earth. So when you hear someone channeling information, like Abraham Hicks, what they're doing is they're accessing a higher frequency and a higher level of information, 
And I look at it when I'm doing medium work for someone or if I'm tapping into another dimension for someone as a client, I just, it feels like a radio station. It feels like I'm just going to a different radio station where there's a whole new programming instead of it feeling so outside of us. It's just more like tuning in, if that makes sense. Certainly, yeah. Um, I guess, uh, well, people that do um, do remote viewing, they uh, turn into uh, certain areas of the uh, of the world or certain yep, areas of absolutely of the universe. Yeah, absolutely, and remote viewing is getting really uh, really popular. As and and basically, kind of what I wanted to discuss about all of this today is that that we are all becoming more intuitive. And our kids are being born with a lot more of these abilities just naturally. Um, And so kind of like the idea of having this this phone call tonight is is really about not being afraid of what's happening. You know, not being afraid if you start seeing things or feeling things or, you know, knowing something before it's going to happen. Because we are in a process of a very fast evolution and we we are all getting acclimated to be able to have more psychic abilities and our intuitions are opening and we're having spontaneous awakenings and we're having the big questions. So I, I just don't want anyone to be afraid of any of this because it's really as natural as, as your soul. Well, a lot of the time, um, critics of, uh, of what you do and critics of, of uh, other people like you call you uh, New Age, don't they? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean, I, there's lots of different words for it. Uh, I just like to think of it as just being conscious, you know, being self-aware. I think when you're self-aware, you know a lot more things uh, just naturally because you're just more aware of where you are. I mean, most of us are constantly uh, walking around on autopilot, you know, and when we walk around on autopilot, we're usually thinking about the past or worrying about the future, and so we miss out a lot on the present moment, and the present moment is where all your are you know, intuition is. It's all where your knowledge is. That's interesting. It really is. Do you think, um, Mm -hmm. well, I had a question there, but I forgot it. Uh, Go ahead and continue (laughs) for a minute, and I'll think of it. I know I will. (laughs) Did you have a question between, like, what was the difference between, like, a ghost and a spirit? Or, I mean, what were your questions as far as... is there a difference? Uh, absolutely. I mean, if we're looking at everything like radio stations, you know, um, and you hear tales of possession and you hear these tales throughout history of, you know, ghost sightings, there's so many different layers, but there's all an aspect of truth in all of it. So, you know, a demonic energy or or something would just be coming from a lower dimension. And a lower dimension is just basically more dense, less light, heavier, uh, you know, slower frequency. And the lower you go, you know, if, if the 12th dimension is supposedly like source energy or oneness, unity, some would call God, and as we move down in density, the lower the density goes, the, the basically you forget you forget that you're connected to that light. You forget that you're connected to that oneness. And as you forget who you are, it can appear evil. You know, I mean, it's kind of like, I'm sure we've all been hurt by people in the past. And I know from experience, hurt people hurt people. So it's never coming from a place of love that someone hurt someone. It's coming from a place where they were hurt first. Is it? So the lower, the lower dimensions are basically just a byproduct of they've forgotten that they're loved. They've forgotten that they're connected to God. I was told a few weeks back, Jessica, by, by someone that um, the reason we come back and the reason we keep coming back uh, to Earth as humans is to uh, try to save humanity. Do you know if that's true? Well, I would say that we're definitely coming back for that now. Um, I say that, you know, from my perspective, tapping into the universal Akashic records and collective consciousness, you know, we, this planet is, was a a big experiment initially. And we have genetic, uh, our bodies are genetic constructs of basically 12 other different star systems. 
And yeah, it's one big experiment to raise the vibration of humanity and bring everybody back into the balance of love. You know, for a really long time, this planet has been operating in, I don't know, what can we call it? Darkness? We could call it ego. We could call it in suffering. We could call it in power over others. And, uh, and, and we're changing that now. And that's why a lot more people are coming, you know, a lot more souls are coming to the planet and they are coming in intuitive and they're coming in psychic and they're coming in, um, we call them indigos or star seeds or crystal energy. And what these beings are is they're coming in human form and they're coming to basically be the example of what uh, Christ was trying to do. So this time in space is technically called the Christ consciousness. It's the age of the second coming. And the age of the second coming is God didn't send one man. He sent all of us this time. And all of our job is to show each other the love that Christ is trying to, to demonstrate. So we're here for that purpose of, of basically saving humanity and saving the planet. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty wild. How many, yeah. um, do you know, do you have any idea or how far back in your uh, past have you gone? How back, how far back in my past? Yeah. In your past lives? Have you ever gone um, back? Yeah, I have gone back in my own. I have gone back in many, many, uh, many of my clients' lives. Uh, I I look at timelines. So if time and space don't actually technically exist, then everything's kind of playing out still in the present moment. Um, and so when I'm looking at myself or when I'm looking at a client, I'm looking at something that's still kind of um, active, maybe a lifetime that's kind of getting in the way, you know. Uh, I don't really usually look in my clients' timelines for the happy stuff because that's, that's not even part of their issue. Usually when people come to me, they're looking for me to help them remove blocks or, you know, self-sabotaging behaviors. And believe it or not, sometimes these self-sabotaging behaviors come from past lives, you know, because basically the soul wants to get it right. So when we start living incarnations and we keep messing up, we want to get it right, so we come and do it over and over and over again. And sometimes we're playing it out with the same people in different roles. And uh, that's why when you meet someone, it's like that instant knowing. You probably had a life with them before, and, uh, you know, your mother could have been your brother and vice versa. And sometimes we just keep playing these things out until we get it right. And what how we get it right is we completely move back into compassion and love and grace for each other and ourselves. What happens to the rest? I mean, what's been happening to the rest of uh, rest of humanity, except for maybe the the five or 10,000 of us that are, that are doing this kind of stuff? Well, I would say that 7% of the population is, is going to be awakening in the next six months. So, um, you know, we have, we've, are, we've had since 2012, actually since the 40s, there has been indigos on this planet uh, working on this mission, and indigos just mean that warrior soul that's come here to create change. Um, you know, you can usually find an indigo because they uh, they don't like the system very much. So I think I'm talking to one right now. I'm sorry, uh, they, but, they don't like what? <laughs> I said I think I'm talking to an indigo right now, you. Okay. So, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, someone who is here to create change. That would be what the indigo would look like. Oh, I... I, I so uh... we... We've had indigos on this planet since the 40s and probably scattered all through time, but the big feeding came in the 40s and then the next generation. If you look at the 40s, how old would those people be in the 60s and, you know, in their 20s? And what happened in the, in the 60s? The revolution. So there, that's a byproduct of the first taste of what Christ consciousness is going to be about. And this doesn't have anything to do with religion when I say that, by the way. That doesn't mean... It has nothing to do with Christianity or Catholicism or any religious uh, dogma. It's just, it's just that's kind of what this whole process of ascension is called, is the Christ consciousness, meaning we're all just trying to keep, keep going on the work that, that Christ is trying to do. Yeah. Now that you mentioned it, Jessica, I, I can remember back in my youth when I was a young boy asking, asking questions about, uh, about religion and that asking, you know, what I thought were valid questions, and uh, I would get I would get scorned for it. Yes, you were the black sheep because you knew 
intuitively what other people did not know. And yeah. that's what a lot of us have gone through is we've kind of had those questions or not understood suffering and not understand the human condition. And, and we're the ones that are looked on like we're the freaks, you know. So a lot of us, has, a lot of us indigos, a lot of us, you know, pioneers that are here to help with the shift have really suffered a lot being, you know, in families or around groups that didn't understand us. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I can remember getting scorned and um, scoffed out, scoffed about it. You know, uh, being being talked to about it. Uh huh. Um, just oh yeah. Well, you've always been different, and you're supposed to be. So that's not a bad thing. That's perfect. You know, you you are exactly who you came to be. So, and you know, just having this radio program helps when you bring truth to the world. People start to ask questions, and when people are start to ask questions, they get information, and that turns to knowledge. Knowledge turns to wisdom, and that's when we have the confidence to make big changes. Yeah, I know there's questions, and uh, you keep uh, well, you keep bringing up all kinds of stuff, and I I keep having different questions, and I uh, keep forgetting the ones that I got. But um, uh, how many how many civilizations do you do you believe uh, that we've had here on Earth? Oh my gosh, thousands. I mean, there's been, there's, this, this planet has, has had its, um, its experiences. And I mean, if you read the stories of Atlantis, um, you know, uh, we were, we basically blew ourselves up in that civilization. And I will have to tell you that part of it was that powerful masculine energy of, of, uh, control. And it was about, technology and it was about um you know not really being with in grace of our own power in that time so those are some great stories if you ever want to get a hold of them yeah well so we uh we were actually on our way to destroy this planet and technically on some timelines we still are on course for destroying this planet so we really have to do our part to make sure that we're focused on ourselves and focused on what we're thinking and feeling and, and what kind of fear we've got because, you know, we can't go change the entire world, but we can definitely start with ourselves. And through empowering ourselves, we can help others. Yeah, but it's not so much us as the, uh, as the population. Uh, it's, it's more or less the corporations and the governments that are doing a lot of this stuff, aren't they? Uh, absolutely. I mean, honestly, this planet is run by, what, seven different families. So the media... Food, farm, pharmaceutical, uh, oil, energy. You know, Thank these you. are all yep. still under control. And But you have to realize that as soon as we take our power back and realize that all we need is each other, then we'll shift that too. Because we have the new energy ready on the planet. We've got the new food sources. We've got, you know, we've got the seeds. We've got everything that we need to turn it around really quickly. But if we're all walking around in fear of losing our jobs or, you know, we don't want to piss off the government, excuse me, then nothing will ever change, you know. So we have to kind of get educated to the perspective of what we are actually capable of. Yeah. It really doesn't make a lot of sense to me, Jessica. I, I don't know if it makes sense to you or not, but the conspiracy is that, uh, you know, they're they're – trying to get rid of humanity for themselves and keep this planet for themselves, but they're also destroying this planet for the, uh, even if they do survive. Well, that's ego. Ego is all about self-destruction. So ego is separateness. Ego is absence of God. Ego is edging God out. Ego is all about let me destroy you and then destroy myself in the process. So that's what creates the polarity of the program. If you look at Earth like a video game, which technically it's a big experiment, then we've got to have a team to play. You know, if we just all sit down here as light warriors and we didn't have anybody to play against, it would be kind of boring. So if we look at it from that perspective of, you know, when you were a little kid and you were playing Indians and and, uh, and cowboys, you didn't always want to be the cowboy. Sometimes you wanted to be the the uh, the bad guy or, or well, which in this factor, the cowboy would have been the bad guy, but... You know, it's kind of like you didn't always want to play the good guy when you were a little kid. And if you look at it from a soul perspective, the soul is still just a child, and the child is just playing a game. 
So technically there isn't any really bad or good. We're just playing a game here. And in order to play it out, we've got to have something to fight up against. Yes, we do. That's a different that's a different perspective, right? It is. Because, you know, it's, it's wonderful to be a conspiracy theorist, and it's wonderful to ask questions and challenge your government. And But when you create a fight against anything, you change the vibration of it. You ha- you can't fight war. You, you, you get all you get is war. So, you know, you, you solve it with peace. Everything John Lennon was saying, one of the most powerful indigos was talking about is peace. You know, with peace, sitting down and stop fighting and saying, I love you, there's no, there's no war to play. It's kind of like an argument. An argument needs two people arguing in order to take place. So if we just stop arguing, if we just stop playing and fighting against everything, then there's no enemy. No, no, there sure isn't. Right. So if we look at it from different, my whole, my whole, whole uh, role on the planet is to help people move out of fear because fear just suffocates you. It stops you. It, it, you know, it makes you not move. It makes you not quit the job. It makes you stay in the unhealthy relationship. Fear just cuts you off the knees. And so when you can look at the whole world, like I don't need to be afraid of the pharmaceutical companies or the media. I can just look at it like I'm playing a basketball game and that's my opposing uh, team So let me get smarter and challenge them and use my own abilities, which is my heart and my intuition and my knowledge, then, you know, it it becomes a whole different playing field here. Yes, it absolutely does. I think um, scientific uh, studies have shown that uh, people that, well, people make decisions on their emotions. Uh Uh-huh. Earth is actually one of the uh, only emotional planets. Emotion doesn't exist uh, in other places in the universe. And that's a funny thing, is uh, emotion dictates a lot of our lives, yet we don't want to feel. And that's why we take all these medicines, just so we don't have to feel ourselves. Yeah. It sounds like... Mm-hmm. Um, that sounds like Mr. Spock from um, from the planet Vulcan, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, we look at the autism that's coming through, and I always say thank God for autism. Some people might, uh, you know, have a, a different theory about that. But I look, I look at autism as a very important species on the planet right now. Regardless of how the autism was obtained, autism is very important in this uh, evolutionary process that we have it because basically our autism community um, doesn't, it, it doesn't connect uh, collectively with emotion um, in the same way that we do. So, therefore, they don't get caught up in it. Therefore, they can, uh, you know, work more clearly on their task of why they're here. And a lot of it is to rewrite codes, mathematics, changing of frequencies. Um, you know, there's genius behind it. And so it's a very necessary part of our evolution. If you look back in time during any evolutionary process, there's always been a species that was brought in to help change things faster. So... That's the way I look at autism, especially as a, a you know, as a background in, in nutrition and things like that. I, you know, we can argue vaccines, we can argue a lot of things, but if you have, if you, if, you know, we've got autism, it's for a reason. Huh. What do you think that yeah, reason is? Yeah, everything is synchronistic. There isn't anything that's happening on the planet right now that is completely synchronistic to, to what we're doing. And when we're talking about ghosts and aliens and angels, because those are usually the questions I get, you know, first and foremost, are they real? Second of all, what's the difference? Um, you know, a ghost can be just leftover energy from someone's consciousness. It can be like a dust. It could be like, I call it a thought form. You know, when someone says, oh, my house is haunted, I ask them, is it interacting with you or is it just there? You know, because a lot of times energy residue from very strong emotion will just be left over from the being once they pass over. And that's just cleared with some, you know, simple um, intention or sage. Uh, but a ghost that's interacting with you, that's uh, basically a being that part of their consciousness is left behind that hasn't crossed over yet. And uh, they could be stuck in some sort of trauma or 
uh, guilt, shame, resentment, something that they may feel like they don't they don't deserve to go over. So a lot of times I'll go and help someone clear that. Um, they even did a kind of a funny uh, ghost hunting show last year where uh, we got to kind of go in and, and, you know, go into the houses and kind of tell the stories of what happened based on the energy that I was picking up. So, you know, we got thought forms that is just leftover residue of a consciousness that's left his body. Uh, and then we've got, a, you know, a ghost. A ghost could be, you know, partly that consciousness is partly still integrated in third dimension, kind of holding on. Maybe it doesn't want to let go. Maybe it doesn't want to leave somebody behind. Maybe it's stuck in a trauma. And then we've got a spirit. A spirit is basically a non-physical being, um, you know, that it doesn't have physical form, but is very much still consciousness. And, uh, you know, then we've got uh, an ET uh, or an extraterrestrial, which is just a soul in a different type of body, you know, a different looking body. Um, it's like we could look at how different whales and dolphins look to us, right? They are technically considered an alien species. Um, and so if we looked at someone else from a different planet, we might think, wow, they look weird. But to us, they might, we might look weird. And an angel is just a, a higher level energy stream that's closely connected to the consciousness of the one. And it's just a higher dimensional energy. So usually when I tap into an angelic energy, it's usually about 10th dimension and above. Aren't we all Does just, that make sense? I, yeah. Huh? I, Aren't we all just hybrids? Oh yeah, we're genetic hybrids. There's no person that's an Earth Earth being here, a human being that isn't a hybrid of basically 12, 12 different DNA samples from all over the universe. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got we've got basically DNA from the Palladians, the Syrians, the Lemurians. Octurians, the list goes on and on, and so we're basically a sample of all these different genetic star systems put onto Earth for the grand experiment or the grand game that they call it. Yeah, and the uh, and the and the draconians—they're the bad guys, right? Uh, well, there's no bad and good. Again, we're just playing no? it out. Yeah. There's, I mean, the thing is, is you you could say the the reptilians are evil, but the thing is, is there are there are even reptilians and draconians that are playing for the good team. So, again, it's what we're afraid of, afraid of that controls our lives. So we don't want to be afraid of ghosts. We don't want to be afraid of ETs. You know, I mean, you know, it's. I believe that once that fear kind of dissipates, we'll we'll be well more connected with our extraterrestrial friends because you know they. They know that if they landed their spaceships here tomorrow, that a lot of people would, the whole vibration of the planet would shift and move back into fear, and that would just basically blow up the planet. So they're waiting for us to eliminate a lot of fear so that they can really make contact with us. Is we'll it have a, a lot more contact in the next 8 to 10 years. Yeah. Maybe less. Maybe less, depending on the fear. Is it a fear, or is it a, uh, or is it a society-induced uh, uh, conditioning? Well, that's fear. So the basis of fear is, is it's an energy. So if we look at the emotional tone scale, fear being the very, very bottom, right? So fear equals powerlessness. If you feel powerless, right, you feel completely like you have zero control, you have no ability to think or discern for yourself. Usually it's when you're in fear you make bad decisions or, you know, you don't make any decisions. And as you move up the emotions, which is frequency, as you move up, right, so you move up into even anger and, uh, and, and you move up, up, up all the way till you get to joy, right? Joy is the frequency of the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth dimension. So if we're in fear, we're not really accessing the higher level energies. We're low, we're accessing the lower frequencies, the lower densities, the lower entities. So as a collective, our job is to eliminate fear and raise the vibration of love. That's interesting. It is. Mm -hmm. Everything's just kind of like a radio station. So fear of being at the bottom, you have no control. I mean, think about the last time you were afraid. You know, either you made a bad decision or you didn't make a decision. And that's probably, the you know, most of the planet. Yeah. 
and and as we start to realize we have nothing to be afraid of and that we can actually trust ourselves and trust our own guidance systems and trust our own intuitions and that, you know, thing you saw at the corner of your eye was something real and you did know what song was going to play on the radio and you did know so-and-so was going to call and you start trusting that, you start to move out of fear. Yeah. You start to go, wow, I know I can leave this job because I know something better is waiting for me that's more along the line of my purpose, which I want to help people. Yeah. That's what most people are feeling right now is I want to help people. That's a sign of the times coming. Well, they're not coming quick enough, though, I don't think. But, uh, <laughs> well, from a false perspective, time doesn't exist, so. No, it's a man-made thing yeah. anyways. <laughs> yeah. So in the grand scheme of it, you know, 80, 90, 100 years is like the blink of an eye. Yes, it is, absolutely. You'll notice, though, if you start to move out of fear, just on a personal basis, things don't seem so bad here. You know, you don't feel so homesick. You don't feel so like you don't belong here. You know, you'll start to feel more connected to nature and people and, and you know, and things that it's only fear that really separates us from each other. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do also know, Je Jessica, that uh, I think science has proven that uh, when somebody is in a state of fear, they can't make the right decisions. They, no way. Uh, the yeah. only choice you can make from fear is desperation. That's never good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trust me, I made plenty of those decisions back in the day. <laughs> I think we, <laughs> I think all, we all have. have. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just getting to a place of, you know, like what I do with my clients who have a lot of fear is, first and foremost, we create safety. You know, it's like, what what is safe about our lives? Maybe it's a checklist. Maybe it's breathing. Maybe it finding a good support system, you know, something where they can connect, connect with some safety. It's, it's, it's not some, you're not going to go study the cosmos when you're worried about, you know, paying your gas bill. You really have to create safety in your life, security in your life, somehow, some way, and then you can really focus on the game that's being played here. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to stay for the chat room there. If anybody has any questions for uh, Jessica or me, just, uh, Put it in the chat room there, please. Um, I do have one. Um, mm -hmm. Why do you think, uh, well, <laughs> everything is a vibration, everything is uh, energy. What? Why do you think in the, uh, in, in the master scheme of the, uh, of the matrix or whatever, what, why do you think we, why do you think someone chose th these uh, human bodies and why do you think we, we, chose as a human existence um, why do you think somebody uh, put us in, in these bodies uh, well we put ourselves in these bodies um, for the experience um, so there's no there's nothing outside of us that's dictating our behavior or our, our choice this is a free will universe therefore we've chosen all of it the reason that a soul would choose to come to Earth is because it is the master class. It is the PhD. It is the ultimate test of survival, meaning being thrown completely into density and forgetting that you are basically God or con uh, connected to God or whatever you want to call it. I say we're extensions of God. Forgetting who we are, being thrown completely in darkness, given an ego, giving a very slow body, and then having manifestation take long time, you know, doesn't have to take a long time, but we make it take a long time. Um, it's the ultimate test of survival. You know, this is, this is uh, can you get through the matrix and remember who you are? I mean, it's not that different from the premise of the movie. You know, it's kind of like... It's, as soon as you realize who you are, the game changes. And that's what we're all doing here. A lot of times we spend lifetime after lifetime after lifetime forgetting because circumstances feel very real. You know, being hungry feels very real. None of it is. It's all an illusion. It's all a hologram. And as it is, I kind of refer to it like this. You know, how many times have you gone into a movie theater, completely dark, you're sitting in the seat, and you're watching a film? Okay, as you watch the film, let's say it's a horror film, we could consider that, and this horror film is having a biochemical reaction on your body, meaning you're jumping, you're screaming, you're scared, 
you're having all of these experiences, yet you're not technically in the movie. You're watching it. So this is your soul's perspective, okay? You're technically watching the movie. And at any given time, you could realize, hey, I'm watching a movie. But it still feels very real when you're experiencing it. Does well, that make sense? Yeah, I think maybe it's it's uh, just just the uh, just the thought of having something like like in the movie or the uh, TV show being done to you is what um, is what gives people this uh, this uh, thrill. Uh huh. Absolutely. And for the same reason, we would even go and pay money for a horror film. Is the same reason a soul would choose to come to yours for the experience. You know, we go to a horror movie to be scared or excited. You know, so we're coming to Earth for the same purpose. You have to remember when non-physical reality is pretty much like love and light, 24-7. So when you come to Earth, you get to experience the absence of that, meaning you get to create a desire for that. And we all know what that feels like when we're hungry, right? When you're hungry, you have a desire to eat. So you have a desire to experience feeding yourself. So from a total perspective, when they're always in love and light, when they come to Earth, they don't feel the love. They don't feel connected. So they have to desire it, and then they go search for it. So it's like a big game of actually being able to feel connected. So what do you do that you feel completely connected? You know, what is the thing that you get to do on the planet where you're doing it and you get to feel completely authentic? Is it this radio show? No, I think um, helping someone. See? Yeah. So, so everything behind the veil is about service, and service is because we love each other, and we have an innate desire within each of us to help each other. And sometimes we help each other out by playing the bad guy. This gets people a lot when I say that, but, you know, usually our biggest triumphs in life come from our darkest times. And it's in our darkest times we remember who we are. So, you know, sometimes when we play someone's bad guy, we're actually still being of service. You know, it's funny. You just happened to mention that a second ago. Um, I've had this conspiracy in the back of my brain for the last, uh, I don't know, six and a half years or something like that. For, well, as long as I've been a researcher and uh, doing this kind of stuff. But um, I've thought that... Um, these people are doing this on purpose to wake us up. <laughs> yeah, they're to, here to wake us up. To wake us up, yeah, to wake humanity mm-hmm. up. Yeah, and, I mean, you don't change your life until you get so sick of something, well, you know, or so tired of something that yeah. you say, okay, I'm not. Yeah, be, well, you know, they're, they are doing these things right out in the open, and they are trying to get caught, and there there has to be a reason why they're doing these things. Well, yeah, it's that they're playing their own game. You know, it's like once this planet is completely evolved back into light, it'll be game over and we'll all love each other, even our worst enemies. You know, even Big Pharma, our real government. We're all going to love each other because at the end of the day, we just were playing the game. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, it's the challenges and it's the bad guys that have played the roles in your life that are going to be your greatest triumph. You're going to learn the most about yourself through those darker experiences than you ever will from the great experiences. How's that going to, I mean, how's that supposed to work? Well, it's kind of like this. If I have a, a, say I'm in an abusive relationship, and this relationship just keeps, you know, getting more and more abusive to the point where I stand up one day and say, I deserve better. I'm leaving. And that, relationship teaches me about what I actually do deserve and it teaches me about how I can love myself and it teaches me about what I actually do deserve in life and I had the strength enough finally to leave that creates empowerment you know and so if we look at the government as just an abusive relationship at some point we're going to be like okay we had enough yeah the reason we created government in the first place is because we're lazy we have been lazy and we've given our power away Yep. So nothing's been done to us. We willingly gave up all of our power, and now Absolutely. we're taking it back. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we uh, millions of people give it up every single day by uh, yeah by uh, acquiescing and uh, and being in compliance. Mhm. 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, my one message is is if you're going to do anything, if you're going to work on anything in, in your own personal journey, it's trust. It's trust and self-love. You know, giving up judgment for other people and what you judge in other people lives very affluently in you, um, meaning that when you judge someone else, you're technically judging yourself. Uh, and working on trust, because I will tell you, when you trust something, you have confidence. When you trust something, you have knowledge. When you trust something, you know, nobody can uh, tell you what's better for you. And I tell my clients every day, stop taking advice from people. Start asking yourself the big questions because it's at the heart of you. If your natural, natural, natural instinct is to help people, which everyone's is, then your natural instincts also have your divine truth. They can answer the bigger questions that you've got if you would just only listen. Yeah, only. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> I believe, uh, well, we're getting back to fear again. Um, I believe that we're having a lot of the problems we have uh, getting through to people is because fear. Um, people, well, they know people don't like to be ridiculed. And a, a lot of people in the, in this movement are being ridiculed, and uh, a lot of people see that. And they, uh, yeah, well, that's part of it. Dark chases, darkness chases light. And I can tell you that I've been through my share of being ridiculed and judged for what I do and constantly, even now. Um, but I will tell you that, you know, the way that I help people through a physical perspective of moving through fear, and this is going to sound kind of funny, but I work with the nervous system. Um, the nervous system is programmed to be in fight or flight when you've been in a, when you've had a lifetime of fear. And when I look at your energy field, you've had a lifetime of fear. You've had a lifetime of suffering. And so your body is technically acclimated to be in fear. So even when things are okay, your body is still afraid. So I do a lot of work with the nervous system um, and teach people how to move their nervous system back into the periocystic side and move it out of the fight or flight. Because when your body is no longer in fight or flight, you become very aware. Fight or flight means danger, 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 danger. That could be when a bill comes in the mail. That could be when you get pulled over by a cop. That could be when you're worrying about what happened last week or afraid of what's happening next week. And I will tell you that when our bodies are in fight or flight, we are dumping a lot of adrenaline into the system. We're dumping a lot of cortisol in the system, and these are all stress hormones. Yeah. And hormones help, you know, what are they What are they creating? They're creating feelings, Right. So we're constantly feeling afraid. We're constantly feeling like, oh, don't go drive at night. You're going to get hit by a car. Or, you know, we have all of this fear that's very illogical, and this is coming a lot from the body. The soul is not ever afraid. The soul is fearless. Those moments where you're like, you know what? I'm not going to be afraid anymore. That's that's you. Yeah. Your body is the one that's been programmed into fear. You know, and then when you watch TV, there's a lot of subliminal programming that you can't hear from a conscious level that I hear from an intuitive level that has a a lot of negative programming underneath it. So when we're constantly looking at commercial television, we're constantly being reprogrammed or programmed. So really what I start with is getting the body out of fight or flight. You know, we have a special device that we use here that helps with that, with light therapy and sound therapy tones and uh, basically a uh, process of un- unprogramming the subconscious mind. So we have a device here that we use. Uh, you know, I do a lot of intuitive work with that, it's going back into the childhood. Uh, but even chiropractic, you know, if you don't have an intuitive or something available to you, chiropractic, acupuncture, uh, reiki, any of these type of, you know, energy modalities are going to help that nervous system get back into a healthy perspective so that you can remove your consciousness out of fear. Are you able to uh, to uh, hypnotize people? I do. I'm actually uh, a, a hypnotherapist, but I'm I'm a hypnotherapist trained through the quantum perspective. So um, the training that I have, I received from Dolores Cannon. She is a very famous um, hypnotherapist. She's been she was doing it for 50 years before she passed over. And uh, she would actually take people back into their past lives and uh, have about 
I don't know, 18 to 20 books about her story, and a lot of it is has to do with aliens. She's one of the um, authorities in the ET uh, realm, so it's funny that we actually went and got our training from her. So I do what's called basically the past life regression hypnotherapy, uh, and it, it's very intense healing. So we do that here, yes. Yeah. And we've had people go into past lives where they were aliens. We've had people go into past lives where they were bugs. Bugs. So, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Very, very cool experience. I will tell you. Hmm. So, uh, somebody doesn't always have to come back as a human, then, huh? Oh no, you've had billions of lifetimes. Oh yeah, and that's the thing. Is for us to think that you know we're just here once and that's it. You know, uh, well, that's no, what, the soul wants to experience lots of different types of experiences. That's what the, so. that's what the uh, religious, well, that's what the religion of the world wants you to think, that, that you uh, are born, you live. Well, religion is just crowd control. So, yeah. you know, and, and I don't have anything against anyone who believes in anything that makes them feel empowered. If it makes you feel empowered, then it's true for you. Um, I always say if it doesn't resonate for you, then it doesn't resonate for you. But from yeah. my experience of religion, just studying all the different facets, anytime there's rules, you know, then that's about control. And judgment. When you have a religion that's based in judgment, like, you know, that that's about control. So my religion is the same religion as the tree. You know, it's just basically just being here and having the experience and giving and receiving energy and you know, doing my part. Are you able to? Uh, are you able to uh, see someone's? Uh, well, are you able to see in essence or uh, giving a reading over Skype or anything like that? Oh yeah. Oh, are you okay? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, the thing is, is energy is more about a feeling than necessarily have something I have to see. Um, sometimes when I do medium work, I do like to see a picture, um, but that's just because I'm probably lazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't do a lot of medium work, so uh, occasionally when I do, I'm like, okay, just bring a picture that will help me. Yeah. But otherwise, no, I don't need to have, uh, I don't need to be in person with anyone because energy is, is, we're connected to every single person on this planet. Our hearts are very telepathic. Right. Our right. heads are not. Our yeah. brains are very separate <laughs> bio, you know, yeah. quantum computers, but they're programmed to, our brain's purpose is to solve problems. Yeah. You know, that's the brain's purpose, solve problems, solve problems, solve problems. So the heart is about connecting. So the heart is extremely telepathic. So when I'm working with someone, I just drop into my heart and bring my consciousness into that space, and then we're connected immediately. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, Martin would have to come on the next time because you've only got a couple minutes left here. You have okay. to go. You but, can definitely uh, email me, and I can answer any questions that you've got. Uh, sure. Um, yeah, you, you want to give out email, email or a, a website or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, better is email us directly on the website, transcendencekc.com. Just uh, attention, Jessica. I'll make sure I read it and respond. Transcendencekc.com. Oh, I'm sorry, it's at Gmail. And transcendencekc? Transcendencekc at Gmail, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll write that in the chat there. You want to uh, uh, you want to say anything for a minute or so? Um, I do want to uh, definitely talk about something that I'm going to be doing over the next couple of um, months. I haven't decided how long I'm going to do it, but um, starting in October, I'm going to be doing something called Second Sunday that hopefully I'll be doing with you, Stephen, a live streaming event uh, where. I'm going to kind of tap into collective consciousness. I'm going to tap into um, the higher realms, and I'm going to bring information down. So whatever is going on that we need to know about on maybe some cheat codes on how do we can play this game a little faster and better and make things speed up, I'm going to bring some, uh, hopefully, some tools in, and then I'm going to be doing the question and answer series live. Uh, and we'll be doing that on the 10 Sundays of every month uh, at Transcendence Wellness Center. And again, Transcendence Wellness Center is, is a wellness center that's based in, uh, you know, creating leadership. We're creating empowerment. So we're, we're helping you move into that role of teacher and healer. Instead of us being the teacher and the healer, we're, we're here to provide 
empowerment tools and education and, you know, healing, of course, and life coaching um, and anything that we can possibly use to create uh, the removal of fear and for you to be able to step into your own grace. Well, Martin would like you to uh, say just a couple of words about him, if you could, if you could uh, channel into him. He's over in Ireland. Martin Farrell. Oh, Martin. Okay, so what's your last name, Martin? Farrell. F-A-R-R-E-L-L. He was born okay. uh, April, okay. 19, April 19, so, 1966. 66. So I feel like I am talking to second generation Indigo. He's got a lot of big questions about what's going on right now. And um, he's definitely got some energy around him. He's got two guides that are working directly with his energy field right now. I feel like some stuff going on with his stomach, uh, some stress he's carrying in his stomach that he can release very easily. Um, and that's coming from the solar plexus. And that's about self-empowerment. So there's some childhood stuff there that he's trying to overcome. Uh, I hope I'm getting this right, but I know I am. So, um, yeah, this awesome if you just go ahead and email me and I'll give you some personal tips and tools because as far as solar plexus goes, you are moving into your power. So it's about who you're around right now. Uh, there's people around you that maybe are not supporting you authentically are not allowing you to be yourself completely. Maybe it's a job, but I'm seeing people around him and he's just wanting to be more and more of himself. So he's connected to this type of information for sure. He could be. Um, can you spell? <laughs> can you spell transcendence for me? I think I'm getting it wrong. Oh gosh, you're gonna put me on the spot here. T R A N S C E N D C E. Okay, I guess I got it right. Yeah. And I'll put attention. And Jessica that and that word actually came intuitively to me when I was opening up the center as as, you know, basically just expansion and transcending things. You know, it's like basically removing anything that's not us. When you transcend something, it's like that removal process. It's changing darkness into light. Well, I appreciate you coming on, and I enjoy yes. it, as always. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. And I hope you uh, you could tell, uh, is it Martin or Marvin? Martin. Martin, that he can actually um, do some deep breathing, belly breathing. He can uh, drink some aloe vera juice to help his uh, stress align a little bit more in his biochemistry and um, either either start meditating more if he's not meditating already or, uh, you know, connect with uh, like-minded people. That's going to really support his journey. Well, I think you just did. <laughs> Good. So thank you again, and uh, I'll be talking to either you or Susie soon then. Okay, yes, let's connect. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. All right, everyone, I'm uh, going to run a little special thing here. Going to do some things in the background, so I'm going to I'm going to run actually my very first show on MSI Radio Media Streaming International. Uh. I had Johnny Meath on. I had to have Johnny Meath on because uh, I, I couldn't get anyone else. And uh, Johnny was my producer back then. Uh, great guy. Lo love the guy. Love to talk to him. Uh, still wish I could talk to him. Uh, had him on just for like six minutes back. Uh, New Year's Eve. Called him on his cell phone. <laughs> called him at his mate's party and he was having fun so he talked for about six minutes but everyone I'm gonna play this past thing from Johnny and uh, hope everybody has a good time 